Hey guys, welcome to another video from EarnPed.com. I am Stevie B. Let's give this another shot. I tried making this video a little bit earlier today and the quality absolutely sucked. So I actually took it down. I don't want you guys having a bad experience. So anytime you guys see something that is a little bit off, please let me know. Um, I do want these videos to not only be informative, I want them to be entertaining and quality too, right? Um, naturally, I'm a little bit limited based off the video game, also based off my rig, my internet connection. I do record from several different places, so that's why a lot of times you do see a difference in recording quality. It can be the internet uh, connection where I am, it can be the computer I'm using at different places, or even the recording uh, software, right? So let's get right to it. Today, I wanted to make a video about everybody's least favorite subject, sweating. Uh, reason being is this is something that new players often come to the game because they hear about. So it's kind of an important thing for us to cover even if it isn't necessarily interesting. I also do have some other interesting things in the video also. So let's get right to it. So sweating is the process of pulling life essence of some sort out of a creature. Um, this green stuff coming out of the creature is sweat. So this is why a lot of people come to the game. They hear you can do it. It's free to do and you can make money. And yes, that's true. Sweat prices are on the decline. They always have been and they will continue to do so. As of right now, sweat is roughly one ped per thousand bottles. Um, that is pretty low. That's roughly 10 cents for about an hour and a half to two hours worth of work. So the thing is, sweat is used in a couple of blueprints. It is used to make mind essence that you can use for teleportation chips and healing chips. It is not used in attack chips for mind force. That would be synthetic mind essence, which is bought from the trade terminal. Uh, probably one of the reasons sweat isn't more actively sought, but my darks gonna make their money where they can, right? So it is something good to do for a new player. Um, you'll notice I am actually in a sweat circle where we all sweat, stand in a circle around the creature and sweat it together. I do this for a couple of reasons. Number one, each creature has a number of sweat bottles in it equivalent to its HP. So a 10 HP puny, which you can sweat by yourself, is only going to have 10 bottles of sweat in it, right? On the other hand, a level 25 Ambulum Max is probably going to have roughly 1,500 bottles of sweat in it, meaning we can stand here and sweat it longer. It's also going to bounce around from person to person, hitting different people, so we're less likely to die. When we do get hit, we have a chance of getting some good defense skills because it is a higher level mob. So we can get some of those evade, courage, uh, combat, reflexes, athletics, alertness, all that good stuff. Um, the thing is, Sweat Gather skill in and of itself is one of the only skills that is account bound. So it really doesn't matter how high your level gets, it's not really going to do you any good. You can't chip it out, you can't chip it in, right? So we use this here, VSE MK1 uh, Sweat Gather tool. The thing is, the higher your Sweat Gather skill goes, unlike other tools in the game, you do not get better with it. You cannot gather more sweat per hour. Uh, really, the sweat circle is probably the easiest way to obtain uh, maximum sweat. You will slowly get slightly more sweat as your concentration grows, as your defense skills grow and you die less. Uh, also, if you have something like an Ares ring, like the one that I'm wearing that increases your reload, it increases reload speed about 8%. So that does give me more sweating attempts per minute and per hour, which means more bottles of sweat altogether, right? So that's kind of all things sweat in a nutshell. Um, you don't need to stand back away from the circle. Just make as nice of a circle as possible. This is more of an oval at the moment. Um, but you get the general idea, right? Moving further back doesn't help you. Moving closer doesn't help you. Just try and keep the creature bouncing from place to place and you'll do fine, right? Um, this is also a great place to meet people. One of my very first sweat circles I ever went to, I met Green Toker 1987. He was a complete jackass to me the entire time I was there, and now he's one of my best friends in game and a great guy, both online and in real life. I know him very well. He's got my personal phone number. Um, not everybody likes his uh, sense of humor or his style, I should say, but he's a pretty good dude once you get to know him. Um, so next thing I want to talk about, which is going to intrigue some of you more experienced players, is where are we? We're actually at Royal Club. Uh, this is a land area owned by Cheese and Tropia Fund. And this is a pretty well-known sweat spot. So how do land areas work? Well, land areas are owned by players. And the players try and hold different events or do different things to make people want to come there to hunt. The reason being is whenever you hunt or mine or shop on a land area, the player is able to set a tax rate. 
So these tax rates are usually between 2% to 4%, somewhere in that general rate. So let's take an example. Let's say that I was to, after this creature goes dry, I was to hunt it, kill it, and loot it, right? And let's say that I looted 97 ped and there was a 3% tax rate. So I loot 97 ped and the land area owner would have gotten 3 ped, which is equivalent to a 3% tax rate, right? So here's kind of the problem with land area taxes um, from both ends of it. Mindark hasn't really told us how it works. So in the example I just gave, was it 100 ped loot inside the creature and I got 97 and the land area owner got 3? Or was it 97 ped of loot in the creature and then the land area owner got 3% of that 97? Or you see what I'm saying here? Was there 100 ped in there and I got 97? Or was there 97 in there and I got 97 and then the land owner gets 3% from somewhere else? Mindark really hasn't ever made it clear to us how exactly that works. Uh, but what we do know is that generally it does seem to work. So roughly if, you know, 100,000 ped is looted on your land area and you've got a 3% tax rate, you're going to make 3,000 ped, right? So we do know that it generally works even if we don't know the finite details of the math behind it because Mindork hasn't really let us in on that yet. Um, I've talked to several land area owners, that part's not clear. But for most of you, the more important thing is how do I decide whether or not it's worth it to hunt on a tax land area versus a non-tax land area? Well, a couple of reasons. Um, number one, we need to look at what is a 3-4% tax actually in reality. 3% or 4% for a tax rate is not actually 3 to 4% for a tax rate. And the reason is we don't get back 100% TT loot, right? So let's say that between decay, ammo, all that good stuff, I spend 100 ped on a hunt, I'm not going to get back 100 ped in loot. I'm only going to get back somewhere in the area of 70 to 90 ped in loot because long term we should have, what, a 93, 94, 95% loot return TT value, but it's going to vary hunt to hunt. So let's say that I go spend 100 ped hunting and I only loot 90 ped and now I'm getting taxed at a rate of 3% that 3% tax is actually closer to what, a 5, 6% tax, give or take? So by the time you do the math on it, most of the tax rates, the general rule of thumb that I use is I pretty much double them. So if it says that it's a 3% tax, I just go into it knowing it's probably closer to a 6% tax, right? But when do we do this and when do we not do it? Well, I'll do it when there's an event. Like a lot of times you can go to the event list by hitting B and you can see all these events can be both Thursdays, Friday, Aatrox, all that good stuff, right? Um, so the thing is, a lot of times you can win these events that are either single highest loot or random awards, and a lot of them are free. Some of them, them you do have to pay to enter, but sometimes the reward that you can win more than offsets that extra tax cost that you're gonna have to pay, right? Other times it's just fun. So if I'm in a sweat circle with my buddies, every now and then we'll make a team and whenever it goes dry instead of somebody dragging it to the turret we'll just shoot it uh loot it and see what happens in fact me and toker did this at one of our very first sweat circles he put a team together and he was able to do a lot of damage and we weren't because we were all new and uh, people were making fun of us oh you're gonna lose money and i think we hit a hall of fame right off the bat it was either a hall of fame or a global one of the two and then everybody was mad that they weren't part of the team so sometimes it can just be fun I think at the end of the day, a lot of us tend to forget pretty often that this is a video game. It's meant to be fun. It's meant to be a place where you can come to relax and have a good time and make friends and hang out with people. It's not meant to be a, let's uh, talk about everything down to the penny every single day, 24 hours a day, and get stressed out about every little peck that we don't make, right? Yet that's what ends up happening because it's based off a real cash economy and the goal here is for us to make money. Even if there's other goals like finishing a mission or you know getting an item of some sort, the, the big goal for almost everybody that plays this game is they want to make money. So I think at the end of the day the game loses something from that kind of mentality a lot of times and we need to remember that. Um, being a part of a group, being a part of uh, a, a group of people that want to have fun playing can help you remember that. That's one of the reasons we have societies in game. Uh, I actually run a society called the University of EU. If you hit F11, because we don't have society terminals anymore, it brings up this menu right here. And under search, you can literally type in University 
of EU. Enter, bam, there we are. Um, so if you don't have a Society Home, feel free to join us. Uh, I pretty much approve any application to the society that is sent in unless you're specifically applying to the society for a no good reason and we know that up front um, then of course you would be denied but that's one of the reasons that societies are even here that's why they're even a thing is because the game is supposed to be fun guys it's not supposed to be all serious all the time but we tend to kind of fall into that trap so that's kind of the lowdown on sweat circles, land areas, how they produce money, the knowns and unknowns of the math behind it, and also how the tax rates aren't necessarily the tax rates that are stated. Um, they're usually significantly higher than the stated tax rate simply because of the way loot returns are. We don't get a 100% loot return, so really a 3% tax is probably closer to a 6% tax. Um, I'd have to work out the math exactly based off the exact returns from each hunt, but suffice to say, 6% has always been a good rule of thumb for me on a 3% tax rate. I, I usually just double the tax rate. Um, also, a little bit of info about when you want to do uh, tax hunting. If it's fun, do it. If it's part of a group activity, do it. If you stand to potentially win a prize, definitely do it, guys. There's, there's plenty of reasons to hunt on tax land. I'm a big, big fan of it myself. Um, I'm a big fan of people going there even if it's just to support your fellow players you know honestly i don't give a crap about a tax rate if i'm only going to kill five or six creatures if i'm just blowing a couple of ped to blow a couple of ped it doesn't bother me where it would bother me would be if i knew i was planning a 30 hour grind where i was planning to cycle 300,000 ped then it might bother me um, there's some creatures you can only find or only find any kind of easily on land areas so sometimes you don't have a choice but usually there's really, really good rewards that come with those. There's really good mission systems. And keep in mind that most land area owners do have events, either stated or non-stated. You can find a lot of those events on Planet Calypso Forum. And a lot of times you can sign up. So for like every global you get on a land area, you get some kind of an extra prize or you earn points toward a prize, right? So that's always good. One last thought I'll leave you guys with. If you notice, I've got these little notes all over my screen. These are sticky notes. So this is all the stuff I currently want to advertise in Cali Trade. So the way I do this is up in my top left-hand corner, my little Wi-Fi symbol, my message center, I click on it. And in the very top left, there is an orange square. And in the top right-hand corner of the orange square is a little star. It says create new message. If I click there, my options are mail or sticky note. If I click on sticky note, it opens a new sticky note. Now I can type whatever and I have my sticky note saved, right? So I can hit this little tool option. I can either delete it or change the color and over here I've got minimize. If I minimize, it goes right back to the top of my messages and then I can either open it again or delete it. So I can save my messages. I can save links. I can save all kinds of good information here. Um, it's also a great way to kind of keep organized if you don't want to type the same thing out over and over and over again for something like Cali Trade. Super, super helpful. So I will kind of leave it at that. That's kind of everything about sweat circles, sticky notes, land areas, land area taxes, kind of how to judge events, stuff like that. Some of the basics that I wanted everybody to know. Um, I've gotten a lot of questions about these things, so I want to kind of lump them together. I have a super special video coming up sometime tomorrow for you guys about armor. It's going to be everything armor related, and it is going to be an awesome video. You guys will want to be sure and see it. For right now, I will kind of leave it there. Be sure and head over to earnped.com. Check out all the different ways you can earn some extra in-game ped. We've got surveys and downloads for people in countries where hideout.tv does not work. For those of you that can use hideout.tv, running it in the background while you play, great way to earn some extra ped. We've had several people earn several hundred ped and make multiple withdrawals already. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Um, been holding that in for like five minutes. Apologize about that. I am slowly getting over this bronchial thing. It's getting much, much better. Hopefully another day or two, it will be completely out of my system. So guys, we're getting more and more messages every day about how these videos are helping people. I was at two or three a day. I'm up to about 10 messages a day now from people that are seeing the videos and it's really changing the game for a lot of people. So that makes me feel good. As long as that's happening, I'll keep pumping them out. Like I said, very, very special armor video coming soon. So be sure and check that one out. Doesn't matter what level you've played at, you will want to see this video for sure. 
So I'm going to leave it right there for now. Um, I am Stevie B. This has been an EarnPed.com production. And thank you guys so much for all the likes, all the subscriptions. We're really, really close to meeting our goals. We're just going to keep at it. And as long as it's helping, we'll keep pumping them out. So we hope that y'all continue to learn and earn. And we will see y'all soon. Take care.